No one is born with a passion, right? You would imagine me saying that Steve Jobs was born with a passion for technology. What, what if he had been born 7,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago? Would he still have that? Would he be dreaming of the iPhone? No, of course not. So where you grow up is going to influence your outcomes far more than who you are. This is terrifying. The greatest predictor of your future success is the zip code in which you grow up. It's not your IQ. It's all about like, what, what are you going to build? Like at what point do you look inside the brain and go, oh, this is how it works. And so I'm going to build desire. So building desire is one of the most misunderstood things in the world. It's like when people say, oh my God, I'm in love with this woman and they think it's gonna be like that forever. And when that wanes and they break up and they keep chasing that initial high without recognizing that's just not the truth of human neurochemistry. It's never gonna be like that. So it starts you know, with that just all-consuming drug-like quality and then it smooths out into something that's long-term pair bonding. And you have to know how to ride those waves. So desire is very much the same. You have to learn how to fan those flames. You have to take an ember of interest and turn it into a raging inferno. So when I was at Quest, my raging inferno, my reason for existing was to end metabolic disease. Well, now I'm doing impact theory and I'm not thinking about metabolic disease anymore. I'm thinking about the poor mindset and I'm trying to save people from their zip code is an easy way to think of it. And so I, fan those flames, which was something I wasn't even thinking about when I was at Quest. So it's like, you can very much pivot, you can decide, but it has to be something real. Like these are real things. I really did care about ending metabolic disease because of my family. I really do care about the zip code being a predictor because of people I've loved in my life who have been, who have succumbed to that, and my inability to help them up to this point. So it's like, you take that initial spark and then you, you cultivate it yeah. like you would a fire. So techni is an ancient Greek word that is a set of skills that matter to you, that you work extraordinarily hard to build, so they are unique to you, that allow you to serve not only yourself but other people. So we are a social creature. I always want people to understand that there are certain things in you, hardwired into you, that if you ignore, you ignore at your peril, and if you leverage, can really propel you forward, such as helping other people. It feels good. You were saying, it's so immediate. When you do something nice for somebody, you feel that right then, man. It feels awesome. And like when you see people like really like fighting and just like, think of uh, Hurricane Katrina to use American uh, disaster, where people flew from all over to come and help and save people, and it's like, Dude, people working more than 24 hours without stopping. I mean, it's just like working until they collapse. It's crazy. But when you feel like you can help another human being alleviate suffering, like people go all in, man. That is innate to us. We want to do that. We're gonna get this neural feedback loop of this feels awesome. I feel good. I feel urgency. Like I, I cannot stop myself. I have to help. And that's so powerful. And if you can make your business about that, the, the thing for me, I hate working with my hands. I hate it. I hate grease on my hands, all that. And I was having to repair equipment, which is something I absolutely hate. So when I was under equipment, and I'm talking like you're working, it's 2 a.m. on a Friday, and your knuckles are bleeding from like trying to fix something, and you're thinking, what am I doing? I kept saying, I'm here to save my mom and my sister because they were morbidly obese. And I knew if I couldn't give them food that they could choose based on taste that happened to be good for them, that I would literally lose them too soon. And so I was like, that's what this is about. That's why I'm here. I'm not here to get rich. I am here to save my mom and my sister. So when people say you just want it and you're going after it, it's gonna happen, uh, I will tell a very different story. So the struggle is guaranteed, the success is not. The money may never come. So every great success story has a certain element of timing, there's a certain amount of luck that goes into it. Now, you have to be prepared to be able to capitalize on that. Like the inhuman amount of work that we did to launch Quest, to launch Impact Theory, most people just are definitely not going to work that hard, that tenaciously for that long. Um, or get that good and face your inadequacies day after day. But at the same time, for it to be the kind of success that it was, there was timing involved. So it became readily apparent to me that I may never get rich, but I could definitely do something that I loved every day. And so what I know is, even if I lost my money, through simple things like being grateful, being willing to build from the ground up again, putting in the work, doing something that's meaningful, serving not just myself, but other people, I can live a life that's fulfilling. And since that's the only thing that really affects your neurochemistry, because I'm always telling people, look, the, the punchline of life is not wealth, it's not fame, it's not admiration, it's how you feel about yourself when you're by yourself. That doesn't require wealth. In fact, wealth can't touch that. Now becoming a badass, like that will make you feel good about yourself and that's something that nobody can take away. We all have the ability to change. And if people really knew who I was before, because they have a hard time believing it when they see me now, yeah. but I'm like, go ask my mom, who was surprised that I succeeded. 
Ask my father-in-law who did not want me to marry his daughter. Ask my best friend. All the people who knew me the most were like, we did not expect you to be successful. My mom recently told me that when I told her I was going to get rich that um, her and my aunts and uncles used to laugh at me behind my back because they were like, bless this kid. He's you know, just a, a dreamer, like, but he's never actually going to get rich. When you realize like, there is a process to go from hopelessly average to accomplishing something really extraordinary. Any human who meets what I call minimum requirements. So if you do that and then you put in the work, you can get the result. And I'll say that the result is fulfillment. You're not necessarily ever going to achieve wealth, but you can achieve deep fulfillment, do amazing sh serve yourself, serve other people. Like you can do some really, really incredible stuff. I think that's far more open to people than they think. I don't want people focused on the money because the money's not going to change how you feel. But if you focus on the fulfillment of technique, building up this rad skill set that's letting you serve yourself and other people, and then marry it to business savvy, your odds of becoming financially successful skyrocket. That's where I hope people get their heads around that fulfillment really is the punchline. But if you want to express that in a way that generates wealth for yourself, it is very, very real. That is a very real possibility.